You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. All right, Black and White Sports supporters. Well, we're going to take a moment to talk about last night's game because there has been something brought up that's very interesting indeed. Now, we know one of the most egregious offenses that one Angel Reese does that has caused her to be beloved by the media that won't call out this this behavior, this bogus behavior, this stat-padding behavior that Angel Reese presents in, during every game, okay? She really showed up with it during that double-double streak where she was literally begging for the ball at the end of games and blowout losses, just trying to score more points to the... It was so noticeable that the New York Liberty stepped up and, and quadruple-teamed her so she couldn't extend that double-double streak. That tells you there were women in the WNBA that had had enough of that bogus, fraudulent streak, right? Well, something was noticed during the game last night. Caitlin Clark had an opportunity to stat pad herself at the very end of the game. She was one point away from getting a big old fat 30-burger. Now, she still got 29-10 and 10 and broke another rookie record last night. But nonetheless, she had an opportunity at the end of the game, and what did she do? She did nothing of the like. She held on to the ball during this play. Let me turn this down. But she had the ball right here, and she held on to it, and she allowed the shot clock to just run down. She did not get aggressive, did not drive to the hoop. Nothing of the sort. Did not throw up a three at the rim. Nothing. And a lot of people noticed that last night and are drawing comparisons to Angel Reese and the differences in personality. By the way, Christy Side still got drugged last night. All right, she still got destroyed last night. Why? Because, well, you're seeing that this score was 98-89 at the end of the game. The Indiana Fever were leading by 28 before halftime. And Christy Sides, in all her infinite wisdom, almost blew that game. Again, I don't know what happened at halftime, but it did not work, and it almost backfired. And at one point, it was like a four-point game. This happened the last time they played the Mercury. Uh, they got a massive lead and almost blew it. So, let's take a look at this right here. And, uh, man, I, a lot of fans noticed this. Seriously. Uh, not that her last assist wasn't a blatant stat pad to get a double-double or anything. It wasn't. Even the announcers called it out. By the way, I'm not mad when they do it. Just calling the double standard, the goalpost keeps moving. We're not calling out a double standard here. Caitlin Clark didn't do it. I mean, seriously, Caitlin Clark didn't do it. I, I don't believe she was stat padding at all for that last assist, and if she was worried about it, she would have thrown up a shot right there. She didn't. Wait, are you saying there's a rookie out there that would have taken that shot and attempts to stat pad? Yeah, yeah. Seriously, she'll also get credited with a turnover, which her haters will use to disrespect her. Absolutely. Angel would have chucked it at the rim five to six times by now. Seriously. I mean, they would have passed it in the Reese to get a double-double with 10 seconds left, and the game decided 100%. Sure, class. No need for stat padding. She's phenomenal. I mean, honestly, come on. Hmm, I wonder if there's another rookie out there if given an opportunity to stat pad to end the game with the game already decided. Nope, no one I can think of. We feel the sarcasm oozing from Knicks fans, fan 930 off of that uh, off of that comment. This was counted as a turnover as well. She could have chucked up the shot to keep the turnovers down, but did the right thing for her team to win. Angel would have blown like 10 layups at the end trying to stat pad. I agree. I agree. I got to tell you, I'm starting to be a big fan of this nickname. If that doo-doo bar, 
if that was Doo Doo Barbie, she would have done anything for that last point to pad them stats. CC has class. And she gets a turnover to added added to her stats. That's right. And I promise you, Caitlin Clark's haters will bring that damn turnover up later. Seriously. Like they can't see all the the there's literally video compilations of her teammates blowing passes that were sent right to her. Uh, honestly, uh, Reese would never. Mm, yeah, yeah, they would. I mean, seriously. Haters will say, quote, look at the turnovers in this game. Yeah, of course they would. Class. Can't teach class. No, nah, she just has it. This is exactly why Caitlin and Reese is not even close. Everyone's thinking the same thing. I mean, unlike Angel Reese, I mean, people are just tagging Angel in this. Seriously. Seriously, that was the logical play. I think the only stat she cares about is the team win. Takes the turnover in which she'll be consistently criticized for. Angel Reese, here's some friendly advice for you. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. That that double-double streak that she had, it should have ended much earlier than it did. But... You know, uh, question character, uh, the content of people's character. Uh, So, Christy Sides caught shrapnel last night, too. Uh, Greatest threats to world peace, uh, Putin, Xi Jinping. I mean, (laughs) Kim Jong-un, Christy Sides came in number one at 41%. That's serious. Uh, Once again, blow the game, and Christy Sides is the worst coach I've ever seen. Oh, here's the LeBron uh, compilation. Christie's sides when it comes to blowing big-ass leads. Let's go. I'll just turn that down so I don't get But there it is, yeah. Yeah, LeBron's showing his ass. That's Christie's sides when it comes to blowing leads with the big dunks. Yep, yep, yep. I mean, she her game was on point last night. The biggest obstacle... In front of the Indiana Fever is Christy Sides. They need somebody with a clue calling the shots ASAP. Caitlin Clark is looking unstoppable, which means Christy Sides will take her out of the game plan the rest of the game. Worst coach in basketball. And it almost happened. It almost happened. Christy Sides didn't get any better in the break. It's criminal how badly she manages games. Please, someone help her. You know, that's a, that's, a, that's a great point, right? You don't necessarily have to. She's, she's a, a, an infancy coach situation, right? A new coach. Where's the consultants? Where's the NBA consultants behind the scenes that can help her and look at film and go, this is what you should have done here, blah, blah, blah. I mean, Guys, Jeff Jeff Van Gundy's out there floating around right now. Wouldn't be a good, wouldn't wouldn't be a bad dude to think about as a head coach either. But you know, I'm just throwing that out. I mean, seriously, right? In the same way that the Cleveland Browns have brought in Mike Vrabel as a consultant for the, the to Kevin Stefanski. You know, if I'm Stefanski, I'm watching my back. But he's a good coach. But nonetheless, they saw an opportunity and brought in somebody that could help the coach. Why couldn't this happen here in, with, with the Indiana Fever? Because I think that's the feeling a lot, a lot of us have, is that if Caitlin Clark and Aaliyah Boston and Kelsey Mitchell and all this talent, there is talent on this team, real talent. You know, if they don't make the finals, and I don't know that they'll make the finals this year. I mean, I understand it's a rookie year, but next year? If they're not in the finals, I'm looking right at the coach going, we're underachieving officially. So, you know, you've got to go. And I get her some help, and if she doesn't improve, you move on from the coach, right? Again, uh, Van Gundy, Mark Jackson, Larry Bird. I mean, the list goes on and on of people we could think about here that could help Caitlin Clark and the rest of this team. Tell me what you think. Interesting. Peace. I'm out. Till next time. Thanks for watching the show. 
be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.